So the next speaker is Michael Sundquist. Um, as far as I learned from, from the abstract, he worked with Hans Hagen. And while Ulrich gave a broad overview, they got into deep and dirty details um, of extending um, fonts for Mars. And he will show some of the choices they had to, made, uh, to make. Thank you. OK, so, so we heard an excellent overview. Uh, so let's go uh, into details. So first, why? Uh, why do I talk about this? So many of these open math uh, type fonts, they have some problems. Th this uh, script and uh, calligraphic alphabets were just mentioned. At one point during our work, we were actually using these uh, selectors. But then we find out that, okay, one font is having the calligraphic and the script as, a, uh, as an alternative, and other fonts the opposite, so to say. So it's, it, it's a mess, that, that's a mess. Other things that are not really working uh, are the metrics. As Ulrich also said, uh, some fonts behave more like old tech fonts and some fonts behave like Cambria. Uh, and he men mentioned also that the, the en engines uh, handle them differently. So C-Tech is more traditional, uh, Lua-Tech maybe more according to the specification, but that's also a problem. There is no real good standard. If you go to the Microsoft web page of this uh, open type, you will find some instructions, but it's, it's lucky. It's not, uh, it's not what I would call a standard, so it's a mess. So what I will present, well, we, we've been working for maybe one and a half year now on, on uh, mathematics in context and uh, fonts and other stuff. Uh, so I will mention to you some conclusions that we made, some conclusions with open type math fonts. Uh, there will be pictures, there will not be code because there is not so much code to show actually. For the user, and that's, uh, that's part of the goal, for the user, they should just enter the, uh, the math as they used to do. And things should just work. I think actually it does now. So I, I think, uh, with, I say that there is a problem and so on, but I think that actually we have come to some kind of converging a uh, nice way of interpreting these fonts that exist. There are, I mean, we, we have to do changes still, but I think that uh, there is progress, so to say. I aim this at context users, since they can use this today in context, but I hope that the rest of you will not stop listening. Maybe you can get inspired. Maybe you can actually implement something for Lua Tech as, as well, or Lua later. I would be happy to, to see that. I'm a LaTeX user as well. Uh, that, that, that could be uh, uh, an option. Okay, context. So as I said, this is part of a bigger uh, math project. And uh, uh, I've been working together with Hans. Uh, so I'm, I'm a bit sad that Arthur is not here because the caps are from Arthur, uh, from different Bacotex. Uh, so, I think that uh, this picture is here. Uh, well, I know why it's here. It's here because we complement each other pretty well. Hans is doing a coding, and I trust him completely with the coding. I'm reading. I'm a mathematician, by, by, by the way. I work as a mathematician, as a researcher, and as a, a, a teacher. Uh, so I, I've seen mathematics for a long time. I know more or less what I want, or what, 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 what there should be. Um, so. so I trust him on the coding, he trusts me on the judgment, we test, we try, and maybe the most uh, important thing is that we have a lot of fun as well. So, uh, This tech lion is, by the way, going to be transferred to Arthur's uh, son at some point. That's a promise. Uh, it's inherited. Okay, so let's look at... Pro okay, so we will see now, now, now some samples. As I said, this is part of a bigger, pro uh, bigger project, so maybe I will actually be able to show something new at the end, which is not really uh, about the fonts, but maybe that will just be a few glimpses. <clears throat> okay, so, so one of the things are bad bounding boxes. So this is Bonum, but the same is true, for example, in, in Garamond which happens to be the font that our university tells our, st our students and, and others to, wor to work with. So we should work with Garamond. They use Garamond Math now. They are very happy that there is a, a math font. It looks very well, except that they have to hack a lot of things because uh, things clash together, as you see to the left. So um, 
First, when we were starting to work, we, we used some goody files where we were patching fonts, runtime. So we were changing the metric character by character, so to say. Uh, and this is more or less what it looked like afterwards. So it's not clashing with the parentheses anymore. Uh, but there is also some, there is more to say about this. I will, I will soon uh, say more about that. This is just to show that the different fonts behave differently. I don't know how well you see the, uh, the vertical lines and so on, but you can see that Bonum, for example, has a lot of italic correction. Latin model has a little. Styx does not have, uh, yeah, well, maybe, no, does not have maybe a, a, a little concrete uh, somewhere as well. Uh, Lucida has no italic correction, so the, the, and you see that the boxes are slightly different. So the fonts are uh, different when they come. So what do we actually do? After that, we had <laughs> sit on many hours, many days, looking character by character, how much should we add, how much should we do, we realized that we could do it like this. Instead of doing it character by character, we add the italic correction to the width of the character. So please do this. And if it sticks out to the right, uh, we, we add something there as well. And for the italic correction we added, we add uh, also a bottom kern. So there are different type of kerns in uh, open type map. One of them is corner kerns. So if we add italic correction, we can also add a negative kern so that things will look okay. So let's look again. This is Bonum. It sticks out a lot. It has a lot of italic correction when we look at the font. When we put, uh, say, subscript and superscript on it, the left picture is before, how it looked before. It looks fine, uh, just because, uh, well, the one is controlled by the italic correction, but for the subscript, that's forgotten, so it's put uh, without adding any italic correction. But what we do is that we have added, you see, maybe you see the orange uh, boxes, I hope so, or at least a bit. Uh, we added that. The one comes out exactly as it came out before, but we also have a corner kern down right now, negative, the same amount as the italic correction, so the zero also comes out as before. So it comes out as intended, and we have somehow gotten rid of the italic correction. This is Lucida, the F in Lucida. Um, it doesn't have uh, italic correction at all. I don't think actually Lucida has italic correction at all. Um, this is the same example in Lucida. Before and after, it looks good in both cases. This font has corner turns. So here we have the zero, it's, it's already there. Okay, so you see we have not destroyed these examples even though the fonts are behaving differently. Okay, so I, I stress it once more. These italic cor uh, corrections, they are transformed into corner turns. We do the same with um, large operators, integrals, and so on, and it, it seems that it works very well. And after this, italic correction is not relevant. It's not used anymore. So somehow, when we load a font, this is done. It's, it, it doesn't take any time, I would say. Uh, and then the font seems to use pretty well in this uh, aspect. As I said, there are different types of um, Kerns, there are these staircase kerns. I don't know if you have seen this booklet by Microsoft. So there are staircase kerns. Not many fonts have them. It can look like this. This is, uh, this is Cambria, by the way. It can be very inconsistent. This is italic V and the, the upright V. So we more or less did, decided that, okay, we, we, we ditch this uh, star, uh, staircase kerns. It's not in many fonts and it doesn't really make a big difference. Okay, let me go on. Uh, accents. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, if you look in the in Fontforge, this is a screenshot from Fontforge, the accents are typically sitting to the left of the origin, so to say. I guess that meant that they should go back and sit over the character in some way. But of course, that, that should be different for different characters. Moreover, they don't have any width. So it can look like this, top, from stack exchange, question. What we do is that we actually give them the width and uh, they will not clash like this. Okay, the arrow is also a bit different because these are different fonts. The first one is PDF text and the other one is 
context. Uh, and also the primes actually look a bit different if you look carefully. So some things are changed from computer model to, to Latin model. You can look like this with accents. If you look at the seven, the anchor point, well, it happens to sit wrong, so to say. So that's another thing that we do. We go over alphabets, which are not really italic, and maybe modify so that the anchor points are sitting in the middle. It may, I think it makes sense. It makes sense at least for this model. Uh, yeah. We can have different widths of some accents. So they come in a certain size, a certain set of sizes, and then some of them have uh, come as extensibles as well. That's not valid for the hat, but the hat is okay to, sh uh, to, to scale a bit. You can switch this on or off, of course. So, so if, you, if you don't want scaling, then you don't get it. Okay, another thing with accents, you see there's a lot with accents. There is something called flattened accents. It's available at, in the fonts we looked, it's available in two fonts, Stix and Cambria come, come with them. So it means that if you have slightly taller letters, the, the hat, for example, is just squeezed a little bit, probably uh, to avoid uh, uh, spread in lines. So it's these two. This, the, the amount uh, where, the, where the, this flattened accent should sit, rather, it's controlled by some font parameter. I will come to that. Uh, all the other fonts, they also set this font parameter. But, for example, Erevon does not have flattened accents, uh, but it has this font parameter. The font parameter was a bit strangely set, and now it's the time to say that uh, Daniel Flippo, he reacts very quickly when you send him a mail uh, and say something about his fonts, you get usually a reply the, the same day or the next day or something like that with a new version to test and, and so on. So uh, I really appreciate his way of working with that. So we fake them. So what we can do is that we can, uh, even if the font does not have the, the, the glyph, we can just scale it slightly uh, to, to avoid um, too tall constructions. Okay, so let me skip this and, and go on to the primes. So that was just a uh, what we did with accents. Okay, primes, short thing, they look very different in different fonts. Some of them have a base character, open sitting high, and then they have some uh, alternatives for superscript and su super superscripts and so on. And they can be differently big. Well, you see this, this one from Libertinus, it's extremely big. Erebon has three, uh, three ones sitting on the baseline instead. You see, they sit in different places. So there is a mechanism, uh, a tweak for that. We tweak it in the goody files, font by font. So this is something that will, that tweak will stay. I mean, there's a, a, we don't know how to handle it otherwise. Um, <coughs> yeah, they always go after superscript. That's another thing. This is, this is more a playing thing. Uh, I would say. So uh, when you do square roots, fractions, you get rules. Rules are by construction rectangular. Uh, I don't know if you even see a difference between uh, these two. <laughs> well, this, this, is Lat this is Latin modern now. So the fraction bar has round ends. And the bar, which is not really, I mean, well, the bar from the, from the radical also have round ends. So we can take glyphs now from the fonts, get rid of these uh, rules. Uh, for uh, Antiqua, it looks very nice because that's, it's, uh, it's very uh, decorated. Okay, this can also be turned on or turned off, of course. If you don't like it, if you prefer rules, uh, you can use rules. Okay. Spacing. Um, oh, did I? Uh, oh, okay. Maybe it's in the wrong, uh, wrong end. Uh, th there was maybe a slight missing. Let's see. Uh, we take this instead. Uh, font parameters. That's one, one of the things. So, uh, for example, these flattened accents, they were controlled by font parameters. There are a lot of font parameters. Uh, Top row, well, this is actually the same, the same expression, the same formula, uh, typeset with three different engines. The, the top one is PDF tech, 
The middle one is Lua Tech, and the bottom one is Lua Mita Tech. And the difference, I don't know if, it, if that's visible here, uh, but say if you look at the superscript from the H, the H2, in Lua Tech, it sits further down than in PDF Tech. It's ex it can be even more disturbing for other combinations of characters, perhaps. Uh, but it's not the same as it is in computer model. And some formulas uh, maybe don't come out really good. So what we have done there is that we have tweaked font parameters. These are, set, these are controlled by font parameters. Uh, so we have tried to imitate the parameters from uh, computer model in Latin model. Um, this is maybe also the place you see a, a set of gray lines here. Uh, so context has a lot of uh, helpers, I would say. So this is, the, there is a gray line going through the plus sign, that's the math axis. There is a, uh, the first H2, the two sits on one line, that's one of these parameters so we can see exactly wh where it usually ends up. The second one below is if you have a superscript and subscript, uh, and the three uh, sits on, on the, the, the corresponding top one, uh, and the prime also has its own line. So that's, that's actually something that here we extend uh, open type. In open type, the prime uh, doesn't have its own, but in context it has, in Lua Mita Tech it has. <coughs> okay, so we tweak them in, in uh, Lua files, and uh, I think usually now the mo most of the mod actually comes out uh, well. So this is also combined with other other parameter sets, so to say. You cannot see it here, but this formula, it consists of several different type of math atoms. So we now have the, the, pro the possibility to use more math types of math atoms. So the first one, the three, is a digit. It's not an ord anymore. A is an ord. Plus is a binary. The square root is a radical. The integral is some big operator. Uh, and, and then if we continue, we have open and close and, and so on. The D is a differential D. So the spacing between the closing parentheses and the D, that's controlled by interatom spacing. So, it, it, so we don't have to do backslash comma or something like that. We do backslash DD, which is differential D. It comes out well in, uh, in all situations, I would say. And then there is a fraction class and, and, and so on. So, so everything is now set up in a more complicated way, perhaps, but it's also more flexible. We have gotten rid of some, some uh, uh, parameters like script, script space. I talked about that last year, so I'm, let me just show this is also taken from the Stack Exchange, I think. If you, if you add sub, subscripts, uh, tech is usually adding this script, script space of 0 0.5 points or something like that. So, and if you do it several times, it can be even worse. This is set up now. It's handled well. We add it when it should be added. Okay. I think that's enough for detail. If you want more details, please approach me. Um, I would rather, how much time do I have left? Five minutes, okay. So let me, let me end by showing, this mock project is continuing. So we are now, what we have been doing during the spring mostly, is we have been looking at paragraphs, line breaking and such things. So formulas are usually broken after binaries or order, uh, relations, but we can break them anywhere if we want, set penalties. Uh, we also have in displayed formulas. Displayed formulas are handled completely different. They are paragraphs by itself in, in context. So they are broken, if you don't do anything manually, they are broken by penalties. So that means that in, in a displayed formula, you, may be, you don't want to break after the equal sign. You want to break before it, so you have to to, to switch these uh, parameters a bit. Okay. Let me go on a bit. <coughs> Multiple passes. Okay. So, we, as I said, we are looking at line breaks and, and building of paragraphs now this, this, uh, this spring. So, if you look at the first paragraph, we have a line break before an X. I think everybody here knows that to avoid that, you usually use a tie. We learned that in, in Barbara's uh, talk. We can do a penalty. So we can have a penalty which is, valid, which is only added before short math uh, uh, stuff, so to say. Short math stuff is, is typical and ordinary. 
So in the second example, we have added that penalty. You see now that the X sticks out a bit. Okay. The third paragraph is run with the same penalty set, but it also run with multiple passes. So we can now go in and say uh, that we want to run the paragraphs not maybe once or twice with this pre-tolerance and tolerance. We can run them as many times as we, work, uh, as we wish. So we can set that up. This is how it looks right now. This is experimenting, so this might look different uh, <coughs> at the different point. So we have one run, pre-tolerance 100, tolerance 200, so that's, that's unchanged. Then we say that, okay, we have four passes with two. We can have two additional, additional passes here. And then we have conditions. So this is, this is a bit uh, complicated. Maybe the, after the next, we have threshold. It says, okay, so if we have an overfull H box of 0 0.025 points, then run again with this tolerance and with actually with expansion. So we can also switch on expansion on the third or fourth run. This means that if we use this H set, it doesn't have to run on all the paragraphs. It can run only on the ones where it actually is a problem. So we have tested this, of course. Uh, it doesn't add, may, maybe the, the, the book, uh, the math book I have, 300 pages, usually compiles in 10 seconds, maybe it's 10.5 or something. So it's, it's almost no overhead. Uh, and you see, we, we also, in this last case, uh, we had some uh, emergency stretch. We, if it's really bad, it, we, if we want to avoid overfull H boxes, we have to do something. Okay, so if you want to see this, uh, I can show you more. Uh, let me skip this if it was only five uh, minutes. This is penalties. We can set penalties. If we have a long formula, let me just say that. We can say, set penalties, extra penalties, in the beginning and in the end of the formula. Then we can force it to be broken more in the middle. So we maybe don't get the one plus on one side and the long formula, but we get, yeah, as you see here, it's uh, plus 23 plus 24 on the top one where it's not set. And on the next line, it puts the 22 down as well. I don't say that this is a good example, <coughs> example but it's an example. Okay, final thing. Did you show uh, this dynamical paragraph uh, program, which was, uh, to me, very cool. Uh, we have tried to understand line breaking and so on. So we have something which is a bit similar, but it's, of course, not dynamic in the sense that you can uh, see exactly. You have to compile to get new, new, new stuff, so to say. So this is a paragraph from the digital typography by Knut. Um, you don't see that, probably, but yeah, there is a lot of numbers here, which are the possible, choi possible choices of breakpoints of this paragraph, where the algorithm actually say, okay, here we could have broken and so on. We can get, we can get this list. This is the list for the previous paragraph. So we, we can see exactly the demerits. We can see the class uh, and so on from this one. Yeah, there is one minute left, exactly. That's perfectly fine because there's only one slide left as well. So we, we can see this. If we want to understand, uh, okay, so uh, say that we, we had this paragraph, you see there is, at the end there is only three choices, 99, 100, and 101. You didn't see them very well, but this is 99, this is 100, and 101 is probably down there. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so what we can do then is that we can hack into it and say that, okay, we want to break at a certain point. So um, probably I set it to 101 because this is 100 now. And, and we can see now, okay, how does this paragraph look if we took that choice instead? And we can compare. And so far I would say that the conclusion from this is that the, the choices that we have been living for now with many, in many, many years were extremely good. I mean, with these parameters and so on. But, Still, we hope to be able to improve. Okay. Um, ah, this was profiling, but now I have no time. Uh, this is about reducing the uh, line spread, if it's possible. If the if the lines, the the, the 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 guilty parts are far away from each other, we can reduce it. Uh, also, no overhead. Almost no overhead, at least. Okay.
Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any questions? Don't see and oh there is one. So, uh, in the end, will you give out a catalog how to make good open type math fonts? Sorry, a, a catalog of good fonts? Yeah, so what, what to do to make a, a good... Yeah, well, you, 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 you get some... Okay, we, we will write an article on this as well, with, that will end up in tugboats, uh, with suggestions, so to say. Because I, I think that maybe that's one of the things that has been holding, say, Luatech back a bit. That math is not really looking good always. And I'm not sure. There's another question or comment. Maybe it's more a comment. I mean, I suppose, I guess, with my mathematical hat on, I mean, we could probably take your context goodie files and get Marcel to make them work in Datec. But, um, I mean, how much effort or, or would it be license problems? I mean, the alternative is to fix the fonts. Yes, in, exactly. In the open type rather than fix it on the fly in Lua, which yeah, would yeah, yeah. help in browsers. The uh, alternative is to fix the font indeed. We, we have looked at some, I mean, we worked a bit on Lucida, so we did a lot of changes to Lucida still. Uh, that, that's, so we, we are part of the responsible for this, this new release. Um, for other fonts, Bonum, we have now a companion Bonum font with a single alpha inside. Because the alpha and the a in bonum, they look exactly the same, so so it's 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 uh, difficult to use by that. But otherwise, I don't know. I, that, that it feels like a, a bit different kind of a project, and starting to do a new Latin modern, for example, it, that feels like a big project, and I'm not sure that we are uh, the ones doing that. But I, I I I would invite somebody who is into fonts to do it, and I would happily discuss. Because I think we know these fonts not by now quite a lot. So, anyone else? Okay, thanks a lot. Um, okay. Thank you.